Just yesterday I picked up some lumber from a customer to make a farm table. All of the lumber came from her grandfather's sawmill and dairy farm and I'm going to be using it to make her a 60 inch long by 42 inch wide farm table. The problem is with this lumber and a lot of the lumber that I received as far as reclaimed lumber goes, it has metal in it, whether it be nails, screws, um, tacks, uh, staples, anything you can imagine. Um, this wood oftentimes is used in structures, houses, barns, sheds, fences, all kinds of stuff. So people weren't worrying about putting nails in it. It wasn't intended to be used uh, to make any furniture in the future. So I'm going to be showing you the tools that I use to make this lumber safe to run through planers, turn on the lathes, and cut with my saws. Let's get started. Here are some of the tools that I commonly use with these four right here being the most common. You can use all kinds of normal stuff that you may find in your just average toolbox, screwdrivers, little wire cutters, needle nose pliers, regular pliers, some sort of snips like these, and uh, just all kinds of normal stuff. Uh, most of this is normal too, with the exception of this nail puller, which is specifically used for pulling nails out of lumber and one of the most uh, useful tools in dealing with reclaimed lumber in general. Uh, just a regular hammer, a small screwdriver like this that helps you going under staples, and then one of these flat pry bars. This is also one of the most handy tools for pretty much anything you'll do, uh, fooling with uh, reclaimed lumber, houses, and so forth. And you can get these very inexpensively, like two or three dollars from Harbor Freight. A lot of times they give them away with those coupons. Um, so those are my most four common tools, but then I also turn to tools like these on occasion. For example, sometimes a nail will just be too big of a deal to get to, and you don't really need to pull it all the way out, but you just need to get it down in the surface enough. So I'll take something like a bigger screwdriver and just punch it down in the, um, uh, down in the wood deeper, then it will be a problem. But for the most part, these are the tools that are the most useful. In addition to pulling the nails out, you're also going to need to find them. Most of them you're going to just be able to see visually, but others are down in the surface and that's where a metal detector of some sort comes in handy. This was just a cheap one from Harbor Freight and it is currently broken, so I can't demonstrate it, but you all know what it does. It just beeps when you're over top metal. So you just depress the button and it'll just chirp once you hit a nail. Um, and then you can just kind of zero in on it, find it, pull that nail out, and then recheck that spot. Sometimes there'll be a nail right beside another nail, and you think you've got it, but you left one in there, and then you hit it with your planer blades, and you've got a gouge in your blade. So some sort of a metal detector uh, is handy, even if you have just one of the ones for checking, metal on the, uh, checking for metal on the beach. You can use that, too. You just want to make sure that you have your metal tools kind of away from the area when you're doing that. Um, also, if the workbench surface that you're using has any metal down into it, for example, when I was assembling this bench, these little spacers where the bench dogs go, I pinned those on with a nail gun uh, when I was making it. So you can kind of get a false positive on where a nail is. Um, so getting it up onto something like some plastic saw horses or just away from any metal is the best way to go with these. So let's take a closer look at how the nail puller works. Um, basically it's just a heavy piece of, it's a heavy tool made from steel and you slam down on this part which drives the jaws down around the piece of metal and then they pinch and then once you, then you just rock it out. So I want to show you from a distance and then I'll show you the results up close. So basically I've got a nail right here. I open up the little jaws around it. You put your hand down here, not up here, or you'll slam your hand. And Sometimes it takes a little doing. You kind of really need to uh, slam it enough times to where those jaws pinch in on the metal. Sometimes they'll keep slipping off and then you'll just have to kind of go at it until you've got it pinched enough. There we go. That one took a little extra doing because it's two nails side by side, but that's just an old square nail. And then I'll uh, bring you in closer for this next one. So here's the nail right there. You can see it's just that little rusty bit barely sticking up from the wood. So all you do, drop the 
jaws of the tool right down over it and then you start to just strike down on the handle and that's just driving those jaws down into the wood and as they drive into the wood because of their shape they're going to start to pinch in on the actual nail itself and then once you are um, down far enough you go ahead and pull back on the lever I'm pulling in this direction and this acts as the fulcrum sometimes it'll slip like that give it a couple more wax then the nail is pulled for your standard nail like this where the head is still attached and sitting proud of the surface you can get this pretty much with any normal tool such as just getting your hammer up under it the flat pry bar but you can also use the nail puller for that those are easy you just grab it and rock it right out of the wood uh, other solutions are these types of flush trim nippers those are really good um, and really fast just grab it and then rock it out uh, with these you just want to be careful that you don't pinch too hard or you'll just cut the head of the nail right off basically you're just trying to just reach around the head it can not actually have to pinch on the shank of the nail and then just pull that right out another solution for getting nails out um, that you say you that say this was totally flush with the surface you can just and you can't get your um, hammer under it all that easy is just to take a screwdriver stick that in front of it and then hammer down drop it down flush and just keep tapping and that will just pull the nail out with a longer nail that is really tough to get out that might not work but with a lot of the smaller stuff it's a quick way to get it with just a flathead screwdriver and a hammer another problem you're going to run into on occasion is the nail is just too deep or the nail is in a knot or something to where you just can't use any of those tools to get that nail out and in that case you're going to have to dig it out and the best way to go about this is just with a hammer or a mallet and a chisel it's best to use some sort of a kind of a beat around chisel just something that's not too nice for this because you are going to kind of bang it up a little I've got a lot of old chisels and that's what I choose to use so just a medium size, it's a half inch chisel and I'm basically just going to kind of dig out around that and if it's a knot that the nail's in you're really going to have to be careful to protect your eyes these knots are brittle and they throw off chips and stuff like this, this just hurt hitting you in the face so basically I'm just going to dig out around that the least I can uh, but it does need to be enough to actually pull that nail out. So now I've got enough of the uh, wood removed from around the nail that I can reach down there and get a hold of it with whatever kind of tool I use. In this case, the easiest one to use is the nail puller. So I'll just... This one's going to give me some trouble because it's in a knot, so that's a pretty hard spot in the wood. there it is so a little extra work you know maybe take you a minute to get that one nail out so you can imagine if you've got a lot of nails in the wood and that pops up a lot it's pretty time consuming uh, dealing with this type of lumber so I want to show you this 4x4 just to show you how many nails and other stuff can be stuck in the wood and to make a comment on using reclaimed wood in general in your projects this has lots of nails it's also got paint which is probably some sort of lead paint I don't deal with it a whole lot in what I work with outside of houses um, so it's not so much that I worry about it but you know this wood's pretty messy with nails and uh, staples so the two comments I want to make is that sometimes it's just not worth it um, now that's all sort of relative to what you're doing what you're using the wood for and how sentimental the wood is to you in general if this was some piece of walnut or mahogany or something else really nice you know I'd, I'd probably do right much work to to uh, use it but in this case this is just a pine 4x4 four four. Um, in this particular situation you know I'm just gonna do it because it's the customers uh, wood 
but if this was something that I just saw laying on the side of the road, I wouldn't even take it because it'd just be too much to fool with just for um, the three table legs that it'll be able to make. What I normally use, pretty much, it's the same thing, just new, bought from Lowe's, are these Douglas fir 4x4s and they cost ten dollars a piece they are brand new clean nothing no metal you know it's simple so I save a lot of time and in the end I only um, end up spending about thirteen dollars I guess um, thirteen dollars in table legs uh, in the end my whole tables are twenty to thirty dollars depending on the size is the actual co my cost in the tables excluding time. So time is the most expensive thing in anything that I'm dealing with. Um, outside of using really expensive materials, most projects fall into that case. Your time is way more uh, than the actual cost of materials. So that brings me to my second point, which is a lot of times customers will expect and people uh, kind of getting that are new into making things just automatically think, well, they're supplying the materials, so it's going to cost less because I don't have that 20 or $30 in the materials. But in reality, you are spending a bunch of time dealing with this wood before you can even get it to the point where this wood is right off the shelf. So when I price tables where the customer gives me wood, it is at least minimally the price of my standard tables, which I list on my website and um, but sometimes they're more uh, sometimes I'll add like an extra hundred dollars just to pull all the nails out because I may spend an hour just pulling all the nails out of a, um, the wood to make one single table and then you still always risk even when using a metal detector that there's some metal still left in there and you ding your planer blades and you might not be able to uh, use them anymore because your next project needs you know clean planer blades so you end up in situations where you're sort of, uh, it's a liability. So charging more to use the customer's lumber is just sort of a little built-in um, insurance that if you do mess something up, that you'll be able to kind of at least pay for that. You're not making any extra money off of it. The blade on this saw is $40. So, you know, when I go and tear uh, several of the carbide teeth out of it, when you ram into something, I need to be able to just go buy another one. Um, and not have that eat into the cost, um, the profit that I'm making off of a table. For pulling out staples, um, whether they're sitting proud or flush or down in the surface, some sort of small flathead screwdriver is the best. Uh, and all you do with that is just either slip it under there with your hands or sometimes you'll just tap it with a hammer and then you just pry it out. But you see what just happened with that one, how it pops up on one side and then what happens is, is you've bent this and so you're going to work hard in that corner if you try to rock this back and forth and you'll break off that piece and end up with just that one little uh, uh, part of the staple down in the wood. So we'll get that one out um, out of the way and show you on this next one. What you really want to do is you put it in there first and then stick your finger firmly on top of the screwdriver and then you pull it out. And that makes sure that the whole thing comes out at once and not just half of it because a lot of these uh, staples are pretty brittle and you're work hardening those corners each time you kind of bend them around. So you just need to be careful of that. Um, and a staple can do a lot of damage to something like a planer blade. A saw will go right through them with carbide teeth, but you want to try to get as much of that out as possible. Well, that's it for pulling out the nails in this particular wood for this project. I've probably got 30 minutes or so in pulling out nails. So that is additional time into the project. It's not too crazy. And of course, you never know if you're going to end up hitting something in that lumber. That's where the metal detector comes into play. After you've got everything else you can possibly find, go back over it with a metal detector and just see, um, see if you got everything. Another thing to kind of keep you from wasting time is a lot of the reclaimed lumber that you're probably finding is from old houses and buildings. Uh, so if you've got a bunch of 2x4 studs um, out of an old house, for example, a lot of times you'll have a lot of nails at both ends where it was toenailed in at the bottom and the top. 
So the easiest thing to do is just chop that off um, as long as you'll still have enough uh, wood for the project you're working on. A lot of times, too, the wood is too kind of broken up right there at the bottom from where all those nails have been, uh, been nailed into it, and then you've pulled it out of a wall. Um, so sometimes it's a lot easier just to go ahead and lose a little bit of material instead of trying to save the material, because in the end, usually areas that are difficult are a little messed up. Um, anyway, and especially if you're going, if you're having to clean up a whole bunch of wood, I'm talking hundreds of boards, the easiest thing to do is just to chop out those really rough areas. Um, and that all, of, uh, of course, all depends on the material you use and how valuable it is or how sentimental it is to you. But um, as you can see, the feature tool in this video was the nail puller. Um, I paid $28 for this, I don't know, probably five or six years ago at a junk shop. And um, it was well worth it. Uh, right when I was picking it up and walking around the store, $28 was a little painful. But I mean, this thing uh, paid for itself 100% uh, the first time I used it. If you're doing any amount of volume with reclaimed wood, and when I mean volume, I'm not talking a lot. I'm just saying if you're just making projects every once in a while, that tool is worth it. But if it's just once in a blue moon, you know, you can get by without it, but it's still a handy tool to have around the house um, just in general. I fool around with houses a lot working on them, and I've used it a lot of times in pulling nails out of um, difficult areas. And when you're actually reclaiming lumber, you can use it to pull nails out before you remove that lumber from wherever it is. And sometimes you can get away with damaging the wood a lot less than just going in there with sledgehammers and pry bars and pulling everything apart. Um, so the tool is worth its weight in... Uh, not quite gold, but you get the idea. Um, flea markets, junk shops, yard sales, whatever, you know. I wouldn't spend a lot of time, you know, looking for something that you're going to pay under $50 for. Just go on eBay and buy one if it's um, valuable to you. Or you can go online and just find some sort of new version of this. They're going to be probably a lot more expensive. Um, but you get it right off the bat and you don't have to uh, drive around hunting something down. It's the same idea as chopping those nails off the end of the board. Don't waste your time. Uh, don't let a nickel hold up a dollar. But um, a lot of the stuff I'm saying really only applies if you're making money um, off your woodworking. But even then, uh, using reclaimed wood is fun, but you know how fun is pulling nails? You really just want to use the material in your project. So the easiest, quickest way that doesn't damage the wood um, or damages the wood the least amount possible is the way you want to go in getting that actual lumber. Um, not sure what else to say. I guess one thing to think about is uh, is when you realize how much time and effort goes into actually processing reclaimed wood. I mean, sometimes it's barely anything to do. You know, there's just a one or two nails or no nails in it, uh, and it's not a problem. Um, or you've paid a whole lot for it, and someone else has already been the one that cleans it up. Um, but it really shows the actual value of this wood that some people are saying they don't have enough money to buy. You know, if you don't have enough money to buy $10, um, uh, a couple of $10 pieces of wood to make your project, but you have hours and hours and hours to spend uh, pulling nails out of lumber, I mean, for me, since I'm making money doing my woodworking, um, paying for wood is a whole lot cheaper than getting it for free. Um, and even in situations where you're not making money off of it, you know, it's still your time. Um, so I don't want to spend my life pulling nails out. So um, anytime I can use new lumber that's clean and ready to go, I do so. The other thing is too, uh, whether I use this or this for a table leg, in the end it's a painted and distressed um, look. It's been turned on the lathe. Uh, they're going to be so close that really it was, it's a shame to you to go through all this effort just to end up painting it. Um, you know, people aren't even really going to notice. In this particular case, it's the customer's wood. It's a sentimental thing. It's going in some sort of clubhouse on some huge amount of land that they own down in, I think, um, Georgia or something. So it's, I think, uh, from what I gathered, it's going to be a family gathering place. So they wanted it there for sentimental purposes for um, because of the grandfather. So I think that's pretty much the gist. I've over-talked it. A lot of times in my videos, you'll notice how I'll ramble on quite a bit and the actual topic of the video is expanded upon, but that's just to sort of add reference of where I'm coming from and how what I'm talking about applies to what I do. Um, sometimes you'll learn about uh, one very specific thing and you sort of learn about it without reference um, 
basically you can learn something, learn one thing, and then end up with 10 more questions. So uh, I try to kind of expand on things a little bit um, as much as I can throughout a video without making it too, too crazy. So that's why these videos get a little long. But I hope you enjoy them. But for those of you who don't, you don't have to watch them. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in a future video. If you'd like to see more about projects using reclaimed wood, check the description below. If you're wondering where I got this beautiful t-shirt, you can uh, buy those in the link below. I used to just make them myself and wear them in videos for fun, but got asked enough times if I could uh, sell them to people. So I've made them available through another website. I don't print them, they do, and then I get uh, less than $5 off of each shirt if you're curious. Um, so if you would like one of these t-shirts, you can see them at the link below or go to my website, thehomesteadcraftsman.com. Click the t-shirts link, and while you're there, check out the other links as well. I've got uh, books and uh, uh, furniture plans and more of it growing, not every day, but on occasion. So thanks for watching. See you next time. To get updates of future videos, click the red button on the screen now, and that'll make you a subscriber of my channel. Also, check out my website, thehomesteadcraftsman.com, and there's all different types of things you can look at on there. Links to t-shirts, books, furniture plans, and Facebook, and then the occasional article. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.